Soren is um, an RF systems integration building um, specialist, um, particularly working on non-destructive testing applications, mainly ultrasonic, X-ray and eddy currents. Um, Soren is Corning's application test engineer. Soren. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gents. Um, yeah, my name is Søren Baldus Kunze. It's a bit hard to pronounce, but uh, now you know what it is. And uh, it's thank you, of course, very much for having me. Uh, wonderful. And it's really great that I'll be able to do this presentation now because it sort of picks up from where all the others left, which is, is really nice. And I'm going to use some of Steve's input and some of Bernard's input as well. Um, I'm going to talk about F connector interface adaption, or well, interface adaption um, really is how does the connector and the mating part connect well. That's not useful. Um, let me step out here so I can see. Um, over the years, we've had some input from our customers. Of course, good and bad, and some of the bad has been very hard to find the root cause on because the behavior, or at least the claim behavior from the customer has been um, a bit colorful, I would say. Um, of course, we've always asked to get samples back for review and for testing, and, and we've done so, but we've never really been able to find a real root cause of why there's been this misbehavior in the network. Um, and of course, in the later years, uh, as there's been an increase in uh, a wanted uh, increase, uh, sorry, uh, better performance in the network. And we also have better uh, instrumentation, field instrumentation for finding the defects. We have sent, seen more customers coming back claiming that there seems to be something wrong. Now they can't really put the finger on what's wrong, but of course it's very easy to point your finger at the jumper or the connector. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, every time uh, we receive one of these, we've, uh, we've tested it, but we haven't been able to, to really find a root cause. Uh, so about a year ago, when I was hired, we took uh, a new approach uh, on the investigation to figure out what is really going on here. Um, and I'll give you a tour of the findings and what we did to try and, and solve it as well, and also share some data uh, from that with you. Um, so here's what we're gonna go through. Uh, some feedback from the field, I think I already covered that. I'm gonna show you some interfaces from the real world. Uh, I'm gonna talk about materials used for the interfaces, test methods that we've used, a summary of what we found, how we solved the issue, and data. Um, what we want, all of us really, in a network is an optimum fit. Now what you see here, I'm going to step out here, so do I lose audio when I step out here? No, you're good. I'm good? Okay. Um, right here, what you see is an x-ray of a passive, it's a tap. Uh, here you have the female port and the male connector. And what we really want is a really good fit between these two. That's the mating or the interface matching. We want these two parts to have as good as a fit as possible, to make it RF tight, of course. And you already mentioned, uh, Bryn, how you made uh, a bad RF signal in the, in the small triaxial cell by drilling a small hole. So just, and, and Bernhardt, was it Bernhardt that showed a, a very small hole in a cable of three times three millimeters? made a lot of noise as well, and that's gonna happen with the connector as well. And this is just a change in the colors to give you a better view of what's going on inside a connector and a passive. Um, so the feedback that we've heard from our customers could be ingress. They tend to fall back on this word if they don't know what's going on. The customer seems to say it's ingress. Uh, but it could be other things like loose connectors or water penetration or a noisy return path or unstable uh, performance and, as I mentioned before, even some more colorful versions. Um, I'll not, I'll not, I won't dig into that. Uh, so 
interfaces from the real world when the connector meets the front face of the passive and the active that they actually make. We just covered that. And a lot of the connection is made through the threaded envelope, so the threads on the passive and the knot itself. However, a lot of the interface matching has a direct effect on the electrical performance. So that means if we don't have the front face of the connector meeting the passive in a, in a perfect manner or a really good manner, we actually lose performance or we, we get RF ingress or express, eg, what do you call it, egress? Yeah. Egress, sorry. Uh, the differences on, on the taps or the interface that we meet could be the materials that are used, uh, the hardness of the materials, the surface treatment. Uh, is it a casting? Is it a machine part? Uh, is it according to the stand standard? And if it is, hopefully it is, is it in a low dimension or a large dimension? There's a lot of different factors that actually makes performance change on these very small parts. So these are interfaces uh, that we receive back from our customers because when we took the new approach, we asked the customers, could you please return other parts from your network to us as well so we could have a look into that. And these are from our customers, uh, well-branded names, and these are the front phases that our connectors, not only our connectors, but any connector has to meet. As you can see, they are, um, I'll use the terminology as put down before, rather colorful. Uh, and I just changed here and put a filter on where I, I get the edge effect so you can actually see the difference in the mating surface that we have. Now, look at that one. I'll show you a large picture of that one uh, in a second. There's almost no contact surface on that one. Uh, so what's going to happen? And one thing you don't really see on this picture, but maybe I can explain it on this one you see only half of the surface being highlighted, and that's because that surface has been tilted. So it's not in a flat plane, it's actually tilted in a degree, I don't know how much, um, but that has a direct effect as well. Maybe not on the mating, but then on a different part, and that's the knot, and the knot will lose its disengage, or has a dis it will get a disengagement, sorry, uh, in the threads um, and break loose at a point eventually. So this is uh, one, of, one of the connectors, uh, sorry, one of the taps from uh, the picture before. As you can see, this is off-centered drill hole um, for the center pin. It's very rough surface and the threads over here you can see are very open. It means that there's not very much material left and you could, if you over torque it, and I'm not talking 100 inch pounds, I'm talking maybe 50 or 60 inch pounds, it might break. You might tear off the thread simply. Um, again, this was the one I pointed out before. There's almost no contact surface. It is within the standard, but really? Uh, again, this is a castle model. This is made of a high sink alloy. I'm going to dig a bit deeper into that later on. Um, a lot of sink in an alloy makes it very, very soft. And you can see that over here because the threads actually broke off when we tested it at 40 inch pounds of torque on the knot. Uh, this is another thing that is a rather big issue, we realized, casting lines. If they are not machined, it's going to cause a lot of issues in the network. <coughs> and this one, you can see that's just the rim of a part of a port. It has extreme scarring, uh, most likely because of a bad casting process. And this is really what we want. Um, a machined part is, is wonderful, and as Steve mentioned when he did his, his introduction, that's what we're working with in the lab. So when we get the jumpers back or the connectors back and we, we put them in our system, in our comet tube, on our VNA, whatever, and we test it, that's what we mate against and we don't see the defects because we've got a perfect condition all of a sudden. So it's really hard when we compare this to that which is in the field and the customer has an issue and we test it on that, we can't really reproduce what the customer has seen. So the differences in material used for the ports has a really big influence on, on the performance. I'm not uh, going to go into details about this, but this is x-ray fluorescence. 
uh, from the spectrum, you can, oh, there the point is, you can see the different materials uh, as columns, and down here you can see the content of the material. Um, I'm going to show you four different slides just to give you an idea about how different the taps or the material in use could be from these taps. Now, as you can see on this one, you have about 52% copper, some nickel, and some zinc. Uh, on this one, you have 60% copper, lots of zinc, and almost nothing in nickel, 4%. This one changes again, and you have tons of zinc in it. And again, another one. Just to show you the difference, that one even has iron in it. Maybe it's made in China from old cycles, bicycles. Um, those four XRF graphs that I just showed you, I also did hardness testing on to see, I mean, if, if the material change is really big or the di different alloys uh, has a different composition in them, what effect does that have on the hardness? Because that has a direct effect on how well we can actually make a material displacement on the interface when we talk down the knot. Uh, we will make some sort, all materials are soft to a point, they have a Floydian point, etc. And when we mate with a connector on it, we will make a material displacement and that also creates the electrical contact. So of course, the more soft material we have, the better electrical contact we can make. However, we can also share off the threats as we just saw on the slide prior. So this one, uh, I've, I've listed them here. We have machine brass, we have alloy with high nickel content, one with high zinc content, and regular casting material. Um, so this one averagely has a hardness of around 140 Vickers. This one, which is the high nickel content, has around 180 Vickers. Then we go to the high zinc content and we are down to 48. And then we go to regular casting material. I say regular because that's the most common alloy used for castings. Uh, and that's around 160. So almost the same as machined brass. So you can actually use casted material for this, but you have to be really uh, sure what alloy you use. So the test methods that we used in our investigation is of course all our regular lab instruments, VNAs, TDRs, spectrum analyzers, etc. But we also used hardness testing with UCI method. You just saw the results from that. Uh, we used ultrasonic floor detection, uh, both for floor detection and for thickness gauging of materials. Microscopic pictures, XRF, X-ray fluorescence for material identification. Eddy currents for conductivity, mainly for the, uh, if you have a surface treatment of a casted material, that could be first a copper layer and then a second layer to measure the conductivity in the layers to see how well they actually perform electrically. Then we use digital x-rays for cross-sectional viewing of the mating surfaces to be able to see how well we actually uh, mate. And then we use penetrant for colored signature of the seating area. So those are some of the uh, things we used during our investigation. Um, so the summary of what we found is that it's more often the fact that the surface of the port is of poor condition, unfortunately. But if you, I know major networks use passives and actives, as Steve mentioned, of rather good quality. They, they are focused on that. But again, all the pictures that you saw from the real world are from smaller network operators and they tend to have a, a poor condition, not, not as well as we would like it to be. So they could either be tilted, they could be off-centered, they could be offset, they could be scarred, or they could even have casting lines in them. <laughs> and these, I call them defects, result in general in a poor matching of the interfaces. Now often the F connector is not aligned with the port simply because either the port is very small in diameter or it is tilted, so you tend to, to push the F connector to or the mating surface to one side, uh, thus you won't have full grip uh, in the threaded envelope. Um, it can cause a gap in one side, which means that it will be RF open. You'll actually have egress on it. Can result in the knot tilting and leaving a very open front, the knot breaking loose or even tearing the threads due to the uneven distribution of forces applied. And it could, of course, also influence the water sealing, uh, as 
the very, I hope you remember the one that had almost no contact surface on it. Uh, it's going to be really hard to have an O-ring sealing on, on that port. Um, and regardless of the defect, the customer will say that they ex experience ingress. I know I, I, that's what we hear. So whenever we hear ingress, we know we have to dig a bit deeper into it. So how we did a lot of thinking on how can we solve this issue because we can't call the customer and say, hey, you have to change all your passives to something that's machine brass. That's not going to work. So we needed to figure out something that could maybe not solve everything, but at least get us uh, to a point where we cover 80% or something of all these issues that we've seen. And what we did was we made this very nice Picasso picture of <laughs> an insert. This is an insert from an F connector. This is the mating surface, but as you can see, it's been made conical. So the only change that we've done on our connectors to solve this issue is to make a small conical part of it or a small inclination on the front end. It's still within the F standards. Uh, the F standard doesn't say that it has to be 90 degrees or it has to be completely flat. It gives us a certain dimension we have to stay within and we are within. And, and the angle of this has been calculated to, uh, to, to give the best fit. That's really, we measure a lot of different taps to see what angle would be needed to fit them all. And, and we made sort of a, a medium line of what we wanted. Um, the conical interface will self-center on the counterpart. So regardless, if, even if we have a very tilted interface, it will make a small material displacement and sit itself in the center. Um, it will even out a defect surface, example given an offset, a knit line, or an angle interface. It will keep the knot in a more correct angle to the threads because it's self-centering. Self and it will create really good electrical contact and create really good mechanical fit as well. So it's not just electrically, it's also mechanical. So it's a bit of a combination of both. And it's because we had to solve both issues because a lot of the things that we heard from the customers were actually that knots broke loose or bad mechanical fit simply. Uh, so how does it fit a tap? Well, here um, we have... This is a F port. It's actually the one that you saw in the pictures before with a casting line on. So you can see part of the casting line here and the other one is back there. And this is the insert from an F connector and it's been pushed towards the F port with the same force applied as if it would have been torqued down with 40 inch pounds. And as you can see here, it's actually open. It's left open, so it's, it's IF on tight. Um, and here we use the conical part instead. The conical part uh, is just around 12 degrees, 11.8 something. And as you can see, this evens out the small casting line that you have, and it makes a complete IF tight connection between the two parts. We also, as I mentioned before, measured uh, DC performance or electrical performance. This is the DC resistance uh, measurement we made on the tap. So we took a bunch of taps and we removed everything uh, except the knot and the insert. We did it both with conical interfaces, with flat face interfaces, and with narrow flat face interfaces to see what the difference is on these. And the measuring point was just aft of the knot, as close to the knot as we could get, and on the shoulder of the tap on each measurement. And what we, the results uh, are here, so the large flat interface is the purple, uh, whatever, pink column you have here, and uh, that's the resistance in milliohms. The narrow flat interface, which is the purple one, is the middle column, and the conical interface is this small column. As you can see, the, the DC resistance is much lower on a conical face, simply because we, we mate really well into the material. We also did a rotational test to see whether we could break it loose uh, easier. Um, so I, I hope this picture is self-explanatory. I don't have to go into details about it. But the results are here. So a large flat interface 
will break loose at this rotational torque. And again, narrow flat interface will have this torque and the conical interface has this torque. And these are the different taps that we measured on. So both electrically DC resistance and mechanical fit, it performs really well. Uh, I talked about material displacement and offset or even angle front faces on connectors. And here you have, um, that's it's a rather steep angle on this one. It's, it's not really flat. Uh, and as you can see, it has a really poor contact surface here. It's also off-centered. If you, if you look at the thickness here and here, you can see that there's a big difference in material. If I mount a conical interface on it and remove it again, this is what happens. You see it's evened out the front face. It's now completely flat. You can actually see the seating area has been placed on the high part of the material where the material was in a high state. It's been evened out a bit. And you can see it's evened out until the conical interface meets 180 degrees offset. So it's flattened out to the point where the interface is flat again. We used X-ray for, for this investigation as well. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it. This is, um, I mentioned casting lines offset uh, and off centers. And I wanted to use, uh, as uniform products as possible, but I couldn't get anyone that had the same measurements on them. So I took uh, machine parts and machined casting lines in them to make sure that I have consistency in the data I collected. I also did that with the offsets, etc. So these are not natural defects, these are reproduced defects uh, to get consistency. This is an x-ray. I hope you can see it. It was better on a previous slide I made. However, if you see here, this is a two-tenth of a millimeter casting line in the center. So the casting line is going to be here on the interface. This is a flat interface you see here. This is, of course, the port with a threaded envelope on. And up here, you can see that it's open. It doesn't mate. It doesn't meet the two materials. It's lighter. Does it make sense? A few people nodding. Yeah. Okay, okay. Next slide is gonna show you a conical interface on the exactly same type tap, or at least the one next to it with the same machining on it. Um, and as you can see, it's closed completely. So it's made a displacement of the material from the casting line until it meets in full 360 degrees contact. Uh, another one is an offset to a center line. Uh, offset, I mean, you have two different heights. Uh, some castings, um, most castings, that's because you have the casting line, is made of two half shelves. And if they're not machined, you could have a height difference. So that's what I call an offset to the, or on the center line. This one is also two tenths of a millimeter in, uh, in height. And as you can see here, I can hardly see it myself. There's a reflection on the screen, sorry. See, it's open down here, so it's, it has full contact here, but it's open down here. Another effect you can see of this, and this is something I mentioned before, is that you can see the threads are almost about to disengage because we have more material that we, we cannot move with the flat interface. So the torque we apply to the knot is only applied to that part of the threaded area. So this part has almost no torque on it or no forces applied in the threads. So that's why we get an almost disengagement up here. And if we torque it maybe 50 inch pounds, it will skip the threads and fall back. So you will still, still have some torque on it, but you will have a really bad connection. Maybe you don't realize that when you go to the field and you torque down your connectors. So that might be some of the issues that we've heard from our customers. Um, this is an offset again, but with a conical interface, I hope you can make out the conical interface here. As you can see, it's evened out. You can see that the, the knot on this one, of course, also has a higher pressure on this side because we have to make the material displacement in this area, but it's only done until we meet that area and we still have a rather good engagement in the threads. We're not about to skip one of the threads. Last one I'm gonna show you from X-ray is a tap made with a two degree angle on it. So the entire front face or the mating surface is offset in two degrees. As you can see, 
the, the connector itself is actually tilted quite a bit. Again, we are almost disengaged with the threads on this area. We will have a good electrical contact, however, but mechanically it doesn't fit very well. And fitting a conical uh, interface to it, you can see that even though it's angled, we still get a better alignment. It's more centered um, and we have more thread engagement. So, coming back to Bernhard and Steve and Bryn, coupling attenuation on a port with casting lines. What does that look like? I'm not going to trouble you with a lot of, of graphs, etc. Actually, I'm almost done now. Um, but I wanted to show you what effect it has uh, on, on a jumper. So, the first thing I did was I took a flat interface connector. Uh, and I mounted it on a machined F81. We all know F81, the standard barrel that we use. Um, and one of our standard cables, and this is the measurement. So we have a transfer impedance goes down to a screening level, which is rather good on this connector and this cable. Um, but what happens if I make casting lines on this F81? Same connector, same cable. This is what happens. Exactly the same. So I took the same cable, again, left the F81 with the casting line on it, machined casting line, uh, and mounted a conical interface on it, and this is what I get. So we are more or less back to, this is a really good performance, and if this is what we test in our lab when we get our jumpers back, and we say, well, it performs perfectly, I mean, Sorry, customer, but you're not right. And the customer gets the jumper back and he experiences this again. Well, we're not talking the same language, that's for certain. So by simply just adding an interface inclination of 12 degrees, we were able to solve a lot of these issues with the interface matching that we've seen over the years. So I'm down to the summary now. So simply just by using this interface here, yeah, we, we can solve a lot of the issues. Is it gives a uniform contact surface resulting in very good electrical and RF type conditions. It self centers and can make a small material displacement for optimum fit. It allows the nut to have more even distribution of the momentum keeping the threaded envelope intact. And the insert cannot be rota rotated due to the high friction and is more unlikely for the nut to break loose due to cable rotations. And it's an optimal performance and fit regardless of the interface conditions. Those might be really big words, but it had a good ring to it. That's it for me. Thank you. Nice presentation. Um, the conical end of the post in the in the connector is very logical, but the main the problem in the field is that. Uh, Installers are, uh, I don't want to use this word, <laughs> and they are not using they are not using a torque wrench. So that if you have the conical end, it's help. If you have the torque wrench, if you don't have a torque wrench in the pocket, and if you tighten the connector with the fingers, it doesn't help. If because you only tighten the connector with, with the your fingers. fingers, yes. Uh, actually, it, even just by tightening it with your fingers, it actually gives a higher rotational torque on the sleeve than a flat interface does. Yeah, because the, the principle of the, of the conical is that you have to a little bit damage the wrong made the female connector, the part of the female Making connector. material displacement, yes, that's correct. However, we, destroying it or damaging it, I'm not really, I don't want to use that word. Uh, because if you have a surface treatment on it, uh, first you put on copper and then another material uh, for making sure it doesn't uh, oxidize in any way. You're, you're not scarring that off, you're simply just making a new indentation on it. Um, we, we've done a lot of testing and, and we also tested what you mentioned and we, we haven't been able to destroy any F ports if, if that's what you're afraid of. Okay, the, my idea is that that much better will be uh, to don, I, I would like to ask uh, the companies like Virgin Media, LGI, don't push us to produce something cheaper. And then on the end, <laughs> then on the end, we can produce for you the brilliant products, trust me. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
you. Are there any other questions? Have you found when you use your conical connector on a high quality hard brass connector, which is as hard or harder than the material you're using, that you actually get less rotational um, force? It weakens when you come to undo it than the flat one, because you've got it's not going to deflect, it's not going to change it. So you've got less surface area in contact, so therefore it follows that it will actually come undone easier if you on good quality connectors, because what you're showing us is performance on bad quality yeah and <laughs> zinc casting connectors and things like that so on we also a, so on a good quality yeah. uh connector that's like a tap connector that hopefully that's all that we, um, lg are using what is the performance there yeah uh we actually did um we used one thing is that when you have a, a machine brass and you have a surface treatment, uh, the surface treatment is, is actually quite hard and very much harder than the brass itself. Um, it goes up to, uh, if you have nitin plating that we're using, it goes up to around 240 Vickers uh, using the UCI method, which is a bit more than, than the machine brass. Um, so we tested that as well, and no, we have not seen that occurring. Uh, if you get a, a port that's made of steel, I've never seen that, <coughs> but let's say you do that, you would, of course, make the uh, material displacement in the conical interface instead. Uh, so, so you're going to move the parts, but I haven't seen it changing the rotational force, the torque re required to break it free. I haven't. You mean you haven't seen it, so it doesn't improve it, or it just stays the same? Or? I haven't seen it being less than a flat interface, that was your question. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the, let's use the, the Wells uh, ports. Uh, they are within this hardness envelope or, or range that we saw from the slides. They are machine brass, so they are around these 160 uh, vickers. Any other questions? Well, we okay. have plenty of time. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll be at lunch. We'll get cold. Okay. okay. So, thank you. Thank very you very much. much.